It's one of the traditions of winter in Maine, the arrival of the Banff Mountain Film Festival in Portland. It is here tomorrow night and Wednesday, featuring short films with stories about remote landscapes and cultures, usually with an element of hardship, exploration, and or my favorite, thrill seeking. <laughs> Tom Whiting from the Banff Mountain Film Festival is with us tonight on 207. Tom, thanks so much for coming Thank in. Thank you. All right, when people who've never heard of this film festival ask you what it is and what sort of makes it stand out from others, what do you say? Well, it's, it's a cross section of mountain, mountain themed sports, mountain culture, mountain adventure. I think what makes it unusual is in the case of say Portland, you have 1100 of your closest friends who you love to be in the outdoors with all in the state theater, watching some great films, a good cross section of, of, of adventure films. Where do these movies come from? Um, certainly USA, Canada, uh, Europe, uh, one, one last year was Nepal, but mostly Europe or the US. All right. Let's take a look at some clips. This is one from a film called Surface. So let's just take a look here. My collection was growing and uh, I slowly realized that you could shoot a photo of a landscape through the wave. So we've got a photographer who realizes that he can take amazing video under the surface of water. Well, he, start, he started off as a sports photographer in Tahiti of surfing and um, uh, windsurfing, body surfing, etc. But he wanted to do more, he wanted to expand this and he figured out he might be able to find a spot in Tahiti or a couple spots where he could actually show the uh, the landscape through the through the waves, but he had to find the right light at the right angle. The, the surface, the, the water had to be perfect, and he could only do this about every two months. He could find where everything came together. Wow! Only two months. That's extraordinary footage. Yeah, <laughs> I is. mean, that's not, it's just mesmerized by that. All right, that's just one of the many movies. One thing that might surprise people is that in these kinds of films, there's a fair amount of humor, and that comes out in a film called The Frenchie. Let's take a look at a clip from that. <laughs> All the time on your, on your life, if you, you, if you panic, you're dead. You cannot panic. Any situation. I have some backup. This is... <laughs> so this is obviously a character. What is this guy up to, Tom? He's an 83-year-old Colorado icon. Everybody in the outdoor world knows him. He, he competes in mountain biking, skiing. Um, but what, this is also the most popular film on the tour this year, number one. It's a 14-minute film. Uh, he's, he's, his, it's his love, his life, his, his passion for life, and uh, I think that's people resonate with. <laughs> 83 years old and competing. Competing. That is pretty impressive. It's understandable why this is a popular one, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's, we mentioned these movies take us to sort of remote places, and that is certainly the case as in Surviving the Outback. Let's take a look at this one. My name's Mike. I'm in the remote Kimberley region of Northwest Australia. Up here, the distances are big. The lizards are big. Even the mice are taking steroids. G'day, Skip. I'm out here completely alone. Okay, what's the idea? I think we can kind of get the gist of it through the title, but what's going on here? 87 years ago, two German aviators crashed their plane, seaplane, in the outback and it took six weeks to, to, to get out to to civilization, he wanted to replicate that. And he, he went in with no, no water, no food. The only equipment he took in is, was what they had from the seaplane. And it took him six weeks to get out to civilization as it took them. So he wanted to know how they survived? And if he could do it. Now he was a pilot, so he knew somewhat about navigation stars. And he was in the, what we call the Green Berets or SEALs. So he had those survival skills that he learned. But still he's out by themselves by himself for six, six, uh, six weeks. One more film we've got a clip of, and this is from a, a picture called Boy Nomad. So we'll take a look at this and we'll talk about it. What is this film about, Tom? Uh, this is about a nine-year-old boy uh, in Mongolia whose passion is racing horses. But at, when he's nine, he, he kind of go into being a real nomad. He has to go out on the winter migration. This is part of the early part where he's doing the racing. But the most of the movie is about the winter migration in, for, uh, in Mongolia with his father and some of the uh, other nomads. So it's kind of this transition into manhood. You've been connected with the Banff Mountain Film Festival for, for how long now? 21 years. What's the biggest change you've seen in the stories that are told and the mm -hmm. way they're told? 
Uh, there's more stories. Number one is not just hey, dude, just race down the hill. It's yep. there's a storyline most most of the films. Certainly, the equipment's better. Um, the more money, there's some sponsorship so they can have a bigger budget to bring in their the bigger, heavier quality cameras. So they just get better. The films yeah. get better. Is it tougher and tougher each year to to kind of narrow down which ones are going to be part of the festival? Uh, it is for me because uh, you have your own biases. I don't. Right. Do I, I really want to see a say a kayak. No. But, but yet that's a great kayaking film. So that's what I find difficult. And also I know what others like, and we try to do a, a cross section of a little bit of everything. Tom Whiting from the Banff Mountain Film Festival at the State Theater. Tomorrow night and Wednesday night, different films each night. Correct. And we've got more information on it in the 207 section of our website, newcentermain.com and our mobile app. Tom, good to see you as always. Stay with us when we come back. More of 207.